Uh, hoi hoi folks, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name's Sean, aka Uncle Frogface, and welcome to today's extra special video. That's right, so we're doing an extra special video today, and this is a video for my niece, Leah. Uh, now, it's Leah's birthday today, and Leah is the whole reason I'm even called Uncle Frogface. So, because the world being the way it is at the moment, uh, Andrew and I haven't been able to visit Leah or give her her present. So, Leah, I know you're watching. Um, we are going to create something for you. And when Uncle Andrew and I can come and see you very soon, hopefully, We'll be able to give you this present so for everyone else without further ado i'm gonna switch cameras roll back a few days to when i started this project and uh, let's get started so today we're going to be using this uh, wooden chest i got from the works you might remember this from the uh, cheap art supply haul video from a, a few weeks ago um, and we're going to be using a few other items so i've got my tools uh, I've got an egg box and some toothpicks, um, some small gems and sewing things, uh, even that air dry clay as well from the works. So first things first, let's start with the chest. So this is not going to make a lot of sense right now. This is something that will uh, become apparent later, but I promise, I promise this is worth it. So what we're doing here is just taking a uh, craft knife and I'm scoring in uh, kind of where the edges of the planks that make up this chest would be giving a little bit more depth to it um, and just making it look a bit more like an old chest and then I'm coming in with so this is actually an old surgical tool it's a bone chisel uh, I'm coming in and just scraping some grain texture into the wood now in this kind of balsa wood that the chest is made out of you know it doesn't make too much difference but when we come back to this later this is really gonna pop so I'm really really excited about this and need to do the sides as well always remember the sides lovely okay so the egg box now the reason I use egg boxes in crafting is because they're quite good for structural stuff uh, you know they're quite a stiff card um, obviously they have to be for holding eggs but they also have a really nice texture so on the outside it's smooth on the inside they're quite rough so what I'm using it for here is kind of uh, to replicate the hammered metal banding that old uh, ancient chests have I'm just using a bit of uh, CA glue, using a toothpick to, to spread the glue around and then just sticking them on in places that I think a chest would have these bits of banding that keep all of the wood together. Again, this is one of those things that looks really messy right now, but when we come back later uh, and paint it will really stand out and look really really nice so that's all of the pieces glued down uh, skipping ahead a little bit I had these D rings as well so uh, they were from my sewing box I use a little bit more egg, egg box material and some CA glue and stick them on the side to make these uh, cute little handles Okay, so these gems here, I've had these for so many years. I've had these since I was uh, teaching textiles at secondary school, so a very, very long time ago. Uh, these are actually iron-on uh, gems, so you put them out in a, whatever pattern you want on your fabric, uh, iron over the top of them, and the glue on the back melts and sticks to the fabric underneath. We're not going to be ironing them on today, we're just going to be using a bit of CA glue and I'm actually using a kneaded eraser here. It's nice and sticky, you can get it into a point. I'm using that to pick up the gems and place them down and then uh, using another toothpick to get them off of the uh, sticky eraser so that they uh, stick in place. And you can do this with blue tack as well or anything that's sticky and kneadable. And I'm going to go over, as so I'm showing you the sides here, but I go over the whole chest and put these little uh, rivet studs in where I think they would be on a chest. 
So now all of those are in. I've put the chest aside to dry and I'm making some of the props to go on the inside. So every student is going to have books. So that's what I'm making here and I'm making books just like you would make a book. Um, I'm starting off by cutting out all of these little bits of paper and then I'm going to go through and fold every piece in half and when all of that's done I end up with these uh, four little stacks of pages taking another little piece of paper a little off cut piece of paper and a little bit of glue and using that round the back like you would in a with a ribbon in book binding and just sticking all the pages together another one of these long pieces with a bit of glue a couple of toothpicks uh, let that dry and then roll it up and we have a lovely little scroll. I'm going to take a bit of embroidery floss uh, and try and figure out how to wrap it around. Another one of these little gems to look like a little wax seal on some glue and stick that in place. So now I'm going back to the egg box and this is going to be the cover for our books. Um, so as well as looking like hammered metal it can also look like worn leather as well and just measuring out how much I need for each one cutting them up and there we go folding them around one of the blanks to get them all into a nice shape and then these are my trusty Ohuhu markers had these for a long time and some of them are definitely drying out now I'm gonna have to replace these at some point I'm just going through and I realized later that if I'd made that purple book blue then I would have had one book for each house at Hogwarts uh, but that's me not planning ahead uh, I, I'll know better for next time and my fingers are starting to look absolutely horrendous here with all of the glue and the ink from all of the different things there we go we have four little books and it's time to break out the air dry clay so first thing I want to make is a broom and air dry clay is really nice for holding detail it's really soft easy to mold with it can take a little bit of time to dry um, but you know I wasn't in any particular rush for this I do have some projects coming up that are sculpting projects and I've just ordered some new polymer clay for that um, rather than using the air dry clay but I'm sure I've got other uses for the air dry clay as well so uh, there are the bristles and now I'm just rolling out these snakes of clay and wrapping them around for these the gold bands on the broom and then adding uh, another little bit as well in just a second and that'll be where the uh, the foot stand on the brooms goes and poke a hole through there we go so I can pop in a wire later pop that aside to dry and I'm gonna make a handle uh, and I actually made this way too big but that's fine I, I came back later and, and remade it uh, but there we go, just a nice basic shape, put that as I had to dry as well. So I was thinking about other things that might go in a student witch and wizard chest. And I thought, well, they'll have some candles. So I, I made one large unburnt pillar candle and then a couple of smaller ones. Uh, and I wanted to make the tops look like they'd been burnt a little bit and were, were all melty wax. I just did that with a very thin snake of clay around the top and then mashed down the edges to make it look like it had melted and then finally in the air dry clay uh, Leah actually bought me one of these as a sketchbook last Christmas so this is the monster book so I thought it was fitting that I make one to go in here I think this this little sculpt took two or three minutes it was really fun to do so uh, I, I said at the beginning that Leah is the reason I'm known as Uncle Frogface and that's because when she was a baby, prepare to be uh, embarrassed now, Leah. If she ever got upset, I would pull faces at her to make her laugh and make her smile. And uh, she started calling me Uncle Frogface because of one particular face that I would pull. And it just kind of stuck. I, I became Uncle Frogface from there. And when I started making profiles to sell art, line and art online and, and share my art online, Uncle Frogface just seemed like the natural name to use. And... and that's it, I'm, I will forever be Uncle Frogface, thanks to Leah. So, this is, uh, it will be, a plant pot. Uh, this is actually my fifth attempt making this plant pot. Um, so, I've, I've 
used all different types of clay and different methods and this ended up being the method that worked best for this I tried pinch parts and other things and uh, it just didn't look right so I came in instead with this method and I think it turned out okay it, it's not too bad it's a it looks quite earthenware um, just cut away the bottom there smooth everything out air dry clay can sometimes have uh, dry kind of little dry lumps in it and there was one at the top here so I'm just coming in with a craft knife and, and cutting that away and then smoothing everything out with uh, one of these little red plastic tools and then I was happy with how it looked but I, I wanted to add a little rim to it as well like any traditional terracotta plant pot so I'm just cutting out a little little uh, rim from clay there and then coming in with a rubber tip tool and some water and just blending this all in lovely and then just just smoothing everything out and pop that aside so we have a plant pot and uh, being the world of Harry Potter and Hogwarts we need something to go in the plant pot so what better than a mandrake those ugly little root babies that we all love so much um, and you know me I love the creepy and the cute so I couldn't resist making one of these little critters so here I am just modeling out his basic body and then with some thin snakes of clay coming in and making some of those more tendril roots to wrap around and just blending them in with a little bit of water and a rubber tool and then some texture to the back and then coming in to make his ugly little cute face so I start by opening up a mouth checking size on the pot all the time to make sure he's going to fit uh, add a lower jaw and then a, an eyebrow ridge to make those beady little eye holes now he is a root, he is a plant, so it needs some branches at the top. I know these first two look like horns, uh, but I had a couple more and it definitely makes it look a little bit more like a plant. Uh, but we'll be working on him a little bit later. There we go. Okay, so this is the air dry clay all dry. I went ahead and made a few other things from Milliput as well. So this is a cauldron made with a ping pong ball and some milliput, a little feather for a quill, a wand which is a toothpick and milliput, and a wand box, and that's our chest. So we're down to painting now. So all of these small items, I'm just going to go over and give them all a coat of their, their kind of base colour, just so that they're not all white and that, that milliput green. Just going to get them all their initial base colour and this is just standard student grade acrylic paint and some water to water it down. Nothing fancy, no fancy mediums or anything. Uh, we like to keep it nice and basic for these, uh, for these little crafts that we do so that anyone can join in at home. There we go, nice brown for the root. A uh, little bit of a darker brown for our monster manual. Uh, getting all of those nooks and crannies and then I just go through and I paint everything in their base colours and when that's done I turn to the chest and again this is just standard black acrylic paint really watered down so it saturates the piece I had to come back later because the gems are plastic with a bit of thicker acrylic paint just to go over those and once that's all done I put it aside I'm going to pick up some of the details. So I'm going over the mandrake and the book with a black wash and then wiping away all of the excess and that just sits in some of the lower details and add a bit of depth. And then with the bristles on the broom I'm coming in with a, a light brown, rubbing some off and then coming in with an even lighter brown and rubbing some of that off just to give some texture. And then this old silver acrylic paint which didn't want to come out I just rub onto the cauldron and then knock back with a tissue to give that cast iron look. So this, I thought I had some gold paint and I couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, so I used this gold paint pen from uni. Um, just came in, had to pump it a few times to get the, the paint flowing. But just come in and uh, colour in these bands around the bottom. And then of course, what Nimbus 2000 is complete without the words Nimbus 2000 at the top. So this is where all of that hard work at the beginning starts to pay off. Uh, this is dry brushing. So I 
get a very small amount of brown paint on the brush, wipe a lot of it off, and just by kind of skimming over the surface, not going too hard with it, it uh, leaves the black in all of the recesses on the piece and all of the, the deep areas, and then picks out all of the highlights in the brown. And you can see it gives this really nice kind of antique wood texture. Um, and it works really well for the wood. Um, you can do this with clay as well. If you put texture into clay, you can do dry brushing over the top to give different textures and different effects. And we're going to do the same thing with the metal bands on this with the silver paint. So if I can get it out of the tube, we're going to dry brush over the metal. And you can see those studs as well really pick up the paint and the areas around them stay nice and dark and just give a little bit of extra depth and extra dimension to the piece. Uh, and on the ends there, around the handles as well. Brilliant, so turning our attention back to the Mandrake, who I've decided to call Melvin. Uh, I took a piece of drawing paper and uh, scribbled on one side with a dark Ahuhu marker, which is just fun to say, and then the other side with a light green Ahuhu marker. Um, and I just cut out these shapes with a craft knife. And now I'm just coming in with a bit of CA glue uh, and a toothpick and just gluing them in to give a bit of greenery to the top of our plant. And now I'm making uh, the foot stand. Uh, and you'll see here I have a bit of an accident, but that's fine. Accidents happen. So I just sculpt the bit that we need. And then I'm coming in with a bit of CA glue just to put this in place. And I touch up with a bit of uh, acrylic paint later. And here we have it. So if I open this up, we'll be able to see what house Lear is. Yes, that's right. Her uncle may be a Slytherin, but Leah is definitely a Hufflepuff. So we've got the yellow on the inside. So let's start to fill this chest with all of the items that we've made. Starting off with our wand in an Ollivander's wand box. Uh, let's cast a few miniature spells with that. Pop that up in the corner there. Next we have our little books, which I've tied together with another bit of uh, embroidery floss. Put a little label on the front book just with a, a bit of masking tape. Uh, and wrote spells on it. Here's our little uh, scroll that we made earlier. We can pop that down there as well. Uh, what good are books and scrolls without ink and a quill? So we can pop that in as well. That can go in the corner as well. And of course our candles. So these uh, wicks are actually bristles from a house painting brush. I just cut little bits and stuck them in again with a bit of CA glue, a bit of super glue. And here is our monster book, a nice little quick sculpt. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. Uh, I really like that. Uh, let's just move these candles out of the way because we've got one more item to go in the chest and it needs a little bit of room. So we'll pop it in the middle. And this is our cauldron. Who would have thought ping pong ball and a bit of uh, milliput would make such a nice little cauldron. So let's put that aside. We've got two more items outside of the chest. So first up, we have our Nimbus 2000. And again, I'm really pleased with how this came out. It does stand by itself, you can see here. Stands quite nicely. Let's just turn that around. There, okay. And finally, our little Mandrake. Oh, look at it, it's cute. I might have to make one of these for myself. So, Leah, this is all for you uh, for when you start at Hogwarts. I really hope you enjoy it when we uh, when we finally bring this round to you. I hope everyone's enjoyed watching this as well. And until next time, everyone, I wish you all the best and goodbye.